Now, administration, and it, it's administration because it's taken as a supplement of omega-3 to people who are either miserable or, or grumpy later in life, shows benefits? Yes. Um, especially for depression, we have 21 randomized placebo-controlled trials done in people with, with severe depressions, with the real illness. And it's unequivocal that these have a therapeutic efficacy and effect. For aggression and violence, we have data which really points to the omega-3 fatty acids, but the best trials thus far done in prisoners have used omega-3 fatty acids plus a multivitamin as a cocktail. Now that has profound implications for the cost of state prisons, which is that simply restoring to ensure nutritional adequacy of omega-3s and multivitamins in both of these trials reduced felony level violence by 37 percent or 34 percent. One third cut in the felony level violence committed in the prisons and 50 percent or 40 percent reduction of assaults on guards. Now that means that you can cut prison sentences shorter, you can have less of a burden of prison guards, you, it's not going to exactly translate into 30 or 40 percent of cut in state budgets for prisons, but it's going to head in that direction. And if we then translate this concept to prevention, what does it hurt to ensure nutritional adequacy to prevent? It doesn't hurt anything, but it may save a huge amount of money in, in simply in state funds for prisons alone. Now, while this conference is a celebration of DHA, there are other nutrients in seafood as well, aren't there? Indeed. And, you know, the organ I talked to the organizers, and, and one of the reasons it's called a celebration of DHA, because a celebration of N3 hoofas didn't really sound very good, or a celebration of fish wasn't quite exactly right. So um, it is the celebration of fish and the long-chain nutrients in fish, and a proposal to the world to pay attention to considering agriculturalizing the seas and consider instead of hunting the seas for fish, really help war on a world level to manage the harvesting and get all countries together. Sustainable fishing does occur and can well occur. You, you have responsible parties that know what it means, it happens and the responsible farming of fish and the production of the right crops to feed the fish is all within grasp. And we can provide the world with the omega-3 fatty acids and with the seafoods that we require for optimal health. And just finally, if you could tell the average consumer in the United States, or for that matter Australia, how to change their diet from the typical diet now to live a longer life, but also to live a healthier life, what might you say? Well, prepare your foods at home. I think Michael Pollan has described this well. He says, first eat foods. That is, you know, eat real food. Don't, you know, cook your food at home, take an interest in your food. Don't just think of this as some grab-and-go energy thing. Recognize that the food becomes your brain. You know, make a choice with your children, whether you want your children's brains to be made of of pure and healthy natural oils from the marine sources or whether you want your children's brains to be made of the junk oils from junk foods and make a choice about about your foods and take it seriously so eat foods um, eat um, don't eat too much moderate your meal sizes eat fish two to three times a week and eat mostly vegetables eat meat meats fine to eat you can do that just don't eat it every meal all the time. Uh, moderate your french fry addiction. French fries are okay, but not with every meal and not as a primary source of calories. And especially for vegetarians and vegans, there's a very big difference between being a colorful, a colorful vegetable vegan and being a french fry vegan. And the latter, I don't think, is very healthy.